Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's Saturday. It's the weekend. Hope everybody had a awesome week and and ready to enjoy your uh, family. Have a safe and fun holiday this weekend. Uh, my name is Alice, and we're doing a series called I Am Enough. And we've done I Am Enough, I Am Loved, I Am Seen, I Am Patient, I Am Worthy. Um, and to, this is part two of I Am a New Creation. So I encourage you to um, go to part one and uh, listen to that, along with some of the other lessons, if you feel compelled to. But this is part two of I am a new creation. I am a new creation. I am a new creation. So let's get right into the lesson. Just to review where we, we left off. We left off where about temptation, how we are trying to be, you know, we confess uh, with our mouths and with our heart that, you know, Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. And one of the things that we have to avoid intentionally is temptation. Now, everybody's temptation is different. Everybody's uh, sin that you may be dealing with is something that's not pleasing to God or something that is keeping you from being set apart. We are of this world, but we, I'm sorry, we're not, we're in this world, but we're not supposed to be of this world. And so what are some of those things? But one of the things we have to be is intentional about um, trying to avoid the temptations. And I told you a little story about when I was 12 or 13, I didn't have a license. And me and uh, uh, my roadie, my uh, bestie at that time, we took her father's car and we drove it. And then, of course, you know, we're thinking nothing will happen. We'll park it and clean it and nobody will be the wiser. Well, we had an accident in it. And um, because of those choices, because all choices deem circumstances, uh, one, my freedom was taken away. Uh, the money that I had uh, earned as a um, teenager working because we always went to camp, a camp on the summer. My mother allowed us to do that. Our mothers allowed us to do that. Um, I had to give the money uh, to my friend's father to fix his car. Thank God it wasn't major, major, but the major thing was what I had done. Uh, my mother trusted me. Well, she gave me a little bit of freedom. Well, she took that freedom away. So there were consequences but, uh, by the choice that I made. So, you know, if you know that you have a, you know, if you, you feel like you have a drinking problem or you're getting ready to, is getting ready to escalate or you're trying to cut down or if you had a problem with alcohol until you're stronger, you don't want to go to places where alcohol is served. Or if you do have a accountability partner, you know, hey, are you okay? Do we need to leave? You know, things of that uh, nature. So learn how to be intentional about recognizing what your temptations are and trying to put them in check. Okay, so that's where we left off yesterday. So this is I Am a New Creation, part two. So how to become a new creature in Christ. Whoever is in Christ is a new creation. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. How do we get there? We repent. We turn away from our sin and turn to Christ. Repent and each of you will be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's Acts 2, 38. If we confess with our mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. That's Romans 10, 9 through 19. I encourage you all to uh, get in your word and um, learn these scriptures uh, for yourself. Now, when you repent and place your faith in Jesus for your salvation, you become a new creation in Christ. You are transformed from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light the kingdom of God's beloved son. That's Colossians 1, 13. I'll give you another verse, Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. We can't do this alone. God has to be in our story. God has to be in our situation. So benefits of being a new creation in Christ, you have a clean slate, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of Lord Jesus Christ, and by the Spirit, your sins are washed away. You are sanctified, made holy and pure, 
set apart from God. Now, these some of the language might be new to some of you all, and I think in a couple lessons early this week, I encourage you all to uh, fi find, if you don't have a church home, to find a Bible-based church home so you can get in the Word and go to the Bible study and, and go to Sunday services where you can learn how to live and apply the Word of God for yourself, okay? So you are justified, made righteous in God's eyes, and cleared of the punishment that you deserve. Once you are on the path to destruction, but now you are a citizen in heaven. That's Philippians 3, 18 through 20. And then also, um, <clears throat> 645 is a little early in the morning, but I'm going to try to do more of uh, uh, lessons in regard to his word and you know how to apply it. And I'm going to get a couple of um, ministers and, and uh, pastors involved so uh, they can help you as well. You know, if you're, if you're, uh, if you are, you have an intentional desire to get more in your word and to learn your word, and but you don't know where to start, it will start just by praying and reading. But then also, uh, you need to know how to apply it. And so that's why I encourage you all again, if, if you don't have a church home, you know, find one uh, where it's uh, biblically based, um, pray about it, and then, you know, go to the Bible study and go to your Sunday services so you can um, get in his, get in, get in the word for yourself. Okay. Uh, you are seated with Jesus in heavenly places. Ephesians 2, 6. Our radical new creation involves dying to sin and resurrection to our new life with Jesus, united with him spiritually in heavenly places. We are in the world, but not of the world. I'm going to repeat that one. We are in the world, but not of the world. Just as in Christ, we die to sin and resurrect as a new creation. We also in Christ are seated in the heavenly realms. That's presence tense. Now, you have an abundant life and healing. I came so that they would have life and have it more abundantly. John 10.10. 10. As a new creation, we don't just exist. We have a superior, extraordinary life that overflows with blessings beyond anything that we can ask or think. And that includes our health. And I think I shared with you also that one of the things that once I realized who I was in him and who I was as a child of God, you know, your priorities change. Um, you have a better perspective on things. And one of the things that I had not been doing was taking care of my temple. And so uh, I am uh, diligently and intentionally trying to do that. Uh, I've joined a, um, a weight loss clinic program. I'm, I'm learning to eat better and what I'm intaking into my body and trying to do the things, you know, I asked God, I said, God, I want you to I want to be used by you. I, you know, you have blessed me uh, beyond measure and I want to do some things for you. Why well, you can't, I can't honor God and not have a healthy temple. And so that is one of the things that I am uh, diligently working on and uh, just wanted to be honest uh, about that. A couple of scriptures, 1 Corinthians 6, 11, and that is what some of you were, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the spirit of our God. First Corinthians 1.30. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God, our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Romans 8.1. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Now, I'm giving you a lot of scriptures. And, uh, I know sometimes if you, you know, if you're kind of new to this, uh, but you still want to uh, get true to this. Uh, one of the ways when I first started, I would just pray before I would read the Bible. I said, Lord, if there's anything that you want to reveal to me, or if there's anything that I need to know in your word, help me understand it. And he will. Uh, and the more and more you get diligent about getting in your word, <clears throat> you'll realize how powerful the word of God is. The word of God is powerful. Is uh, is true and it's not void. Um, it brings life, and um, you. But we have to do our part. Uh, I say that a lot, but because I really want you all to believe that you have to do your part 
as well. Now, there are some instances sometimes where, yeah, God can do anything. Uh, he can, he's a miracle worker. He can do anything. But for, um, and as far as having a better relationship with him, you know, it's a choice, but we have to be intentional about our choice because the word of God can save you. The word of God can give you peace. The word of God can give you rest. The word of God can give you answers to things that no man or no situation can give you. So I encourage you, my beloved brother, I encourage you, my beloved sister, uh, to get in his word. And even if you know God and you know his word and, you know, you've been kind of lax about <clears throat> getting in his word, do a little better. Because when you know better, you should do better. And so um, I am a new creation. I am a new creation. Uh, God, if you're listening to this, he, he, he chose to wake you up this morning. He chose to open your eyes. He, he chose to give you a brand new opportunity to get it right. What are you doing with that opportunity? Um, what choices are you making? Uh, when you say I am a new creation in Christ, uh, what does that mean for you? Um, these are questions that um, on a, you, we should ask ourselves on a daily basis because every day, once we get up, we got a new opportunity. And these are questions that I ask myself. Uh, in no shape, form, or fashion, um, and I always kind of stress this periodically, that I'm, am I judging anyone or, or feel like, you know, I'm here and you're there? Not at all. Not at all. I am a work in progress, too. But some, these are some of the tools and the exercises I have used to get to the point where I'm at now. Um, I use his word. Um, I live on his word. Uh, I, I bring his word back to him. You know, like, Lord, you said in your word that this, this and that, you know, and uh, he likes for us to uh, give him his word back. He likes for us to uh, give him um, our trials and tribulations and what we're going through. That's what, you know, one of the things that, he, you know, he says, I am who I say I am. I am your rock. I am your fortress. I am your deliverer. I am God and God alone. I am the God of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So he wants our situations. He wants our circumstances. He wants us to give it to him. But a lot of times we get stagnant or frozen because we don't really, we know him, but we don't have a relationship with him. So I am a new creation in Christ, um, part two. Now, I always try to give you an example of whatever the topic is that's applicable to uh, what's going on. And the, the example of, of, of um, someone in the Bible that became a new creation was Saul. Saul uh, experienced an extraordinary conversion. Now, uh, it's, I encourage you to read Acts 8. It's in the New Testament. Acts 8 and Acts 9. Uh, that kind of gives you the meat of the story. And so I encourage you, I'm going to kind of summarize it, but I really encourage you to get in that word and, and see where, you know, his name was Saul, but then Saul became Paul. So bef before placing his faith in Jesus, he orchestrated massive persecution against Christians. This is Acts 8, 1 through 3. He was uttering threats with every breath, and was eager to kill the Lord's followers. And then the Lord knocked him off his horse, struck him blind, and spoke to Saul. God sent Ananias, uh, another person in the Bible, to heal Saul and tell him that he was God's chosen instrument to take his message to Gentiles, kings, and Israel's people. That's Acts 9. So Acts 8 and Acts 9. And that's what Saul did, and he became Paul. He became a new creation. He stopped persecuting the church and instead became his most significant evangelist, introducing the message of Jesus throughout the Middle East and Southern Europe. He also wrote half of the New Testament books, explaining essential doctrines about faith and what being a new creation meant. So just like God... 
um, you saw and he became Paul, Paul and he became a new creation, he can use you. Don't ever think uh, what you have done will stagnate you or uh, discredit you or cause you not to uh, be his child. You're his child. And uh, there is, a again, there's a process that you have to go through. Um, you know, you have to confess in your mouth. You have to repent of your sins. And again, these are things that you can learn or you, you can understand. Uh, unfortunately, we just can't do it in the, the 15 to 30 minutes of here. But if you're uh, really eager or want to be intentional about your walk and how you talk, um, do your part. Do the work. Get intentional about getting in his word. Because if he can use Saul and change him to Paul. Now, he was a murderer. He 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 hated people who who professed that they loved Christ. And he turned around and then he was giving messages to those people that he hated. Because God changed it. So if he can, if he can change him, he can change us. And, um, and he does, you know, there are, there are some things that once I had said that I wanted to, uh, be a better person and I wanted you to use me more. There were some things that he showed me that I need to work on and, and, and work out. And I became intentional about working some of those things out. And I think I shared with you, one of them was I'm not a patient person. I was not a patient person. And I didn't see it, but God saw it, and he revealed that to me. At first, I was like, you know, no, you, I'm, I'm pretty patient. No, I wasn't. I really wasn't. Um, I never probably, a lot of times, I didn't show the other person. Now, at my job, yeah, at my workplace, I'm a total, I was a totally different person. If you, I, I think I share with you all. If you didn't get it, get gone. But with my loved ones, I tried to be as patient as I could, you know. Uh, and, but and sometimes patience for me, too, was you know, how I re, you know, how I reacted to things or how I said things too. So God just kind of has worked with me. He really has. And just like he has wor is working with me, he can work with you. So don't give up. You are a new creation in him. Every day he gives us a new opportunity to get it right. And we thank God for that this morning. We thank God that we have a father that says, hey, I love you enough to give you a second chance, a third chance, a fourth chance a fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth chance. So every day, every day when, when you get up, look at it as a, a brand new opportunity to not only get it right, but just to strive to be a better uh, person in him. Strive to find ways to uh, better and build up his kingdom. Find, find ways to uh, whatever your situation is or whatever your circumstance is, See God in it. See your heavenly father in it. You know, I know I'm kind of going through something right now, but God, I know you're here. I know you're present. I know your peace and the power can surround me. Help me to see that. Help me to see that. So I am a new creation, uh, part two. I'm going to put the scriptures, uh, all the scriptures in the comments today and the song that I did yesterday uh, as well. OK, so all of that will be in um, in our uh, in the comments today. All right. So uh, let's go to God in prayer. I'm caught up in your presence. I just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy moment. I never want to leave. I'm not here for blessings. Jesus, you don't owe me anything. More than anything that you can do. I just want you. Now I'm sorry. When I've just gone through the motions, I'm sorry. When I just sang another song, take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. Now I'm sorry 
When I've come with my agenda, I'm sorry. When I forgot that you're enough, take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. I'm caught up in your presence. I just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy moment. I never want to leave. Lord, thank you, God. Thank you for this morning. Thank you, God, for giving us another opportunity to get it right. Thank you for opening our eyes, allowing us to get up and, and cut the lights on, uh, to run the water, to get a drink. Just, just thank you, dear God, for all the things that, the little things that you are doing in our, our lives. But Lord, our specific prayer for today is just to, uh, we want to be new creations in you. We want to, to walk better. We want to talk better. We want to treat others better, dear God. And in order to do that, we have to spend more time with you. If we have a better relationship with you and understand what our expectations are to be set apart and to be your child, it will help us and enable us to be able to treat others better and uh, treat our families better, uh, learn how to talk to people better, learn how to meet people where they are, dear God. And so we need your help with that. So help us to walk right. Help us to talk right. Help us to be better examples of you. And Lord, we know that we have to do our part. So help us, dear God, in to, help, to have a better relationship with us. Help us to intentionally take more time with you. Carve out in our schedules whether it's in the daytime or the nighttime or in noontime, help us to carve out time in our schedules to spend some time with you, to sit at your feet, to talk with you, uh, to be able to, to listen to your word and to, to um, just talk with you, just to uh, have a, just a, a, a place of peace and power and presence, dear Lord. There's something about just being in your presence. It's something about your word coming to life. There's just something about knowing that you're powerful, that you are God and God alone. And Lord, help us with that. Help us, dear God, uh, take ourselves out of the equation. Help us to be uh, more conscientious about what we need to do to have a better relationship with you. Help us, Lord. We need you. We need you in every aspect of our life. We need you in every aspect of our life. And so, Lord, help us. Help us to be the new creation uh, for you. It's in your precious name, in your precious, precious name, that we pray this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. So this is a poem that I wrote a couple years ago, but this is one of my go-to poems where, you know, I'm feeling a, you know, I'm not doing what maybe I should be doing or, you know, I'm feeling a certain kind of way. It's just a reminder for me of um, my why I'm here on this earth and why I'm still here on this earth. So the name of the poem is What's in a Name? What's in a name when especially some names are different? while some names are the same. Does it define me? Does it make me free? Does it set me apart? Does it reveal truth that everyone can always see? Does it give me endless grace? Is my name evident on my face? Does it greet mercy and invite peace from place to place? Does my name speak forgiveness that's genuine from the heart? Does my name touch others? Does it give light to the dark? My name is different from your name and your name is different from mine. But as children of God, our names 
are one of the same kind. My name represents love. My name comes from the spirit from the heaven above. My name should be written in the Lamb Book of Life. It is my hope that my name is an example of Jesus Christ. Have an awesome day. Have an awesome Saturday. Have an awesome safe and, and um safe and fun holiday. Have fun, but be safe. We will see you all tomorrow. God bless and have an awesome day in him. Have a great day.